Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside Interviews. Today we are in the Petite Patrie area of Montreal. Uh, we're at Ile de Garde with Olivier. Thanks for having us today. Appreciate it. Uh, so what's the beer story for Ile de Garde? Uh, the beer story it begins with uh, with, with the we are five owners mm -hmm. uh, here. It begins with the the, the uh, some of my friends that uh, just want to open their own place. It's people that used to work in in bars and restaurants and in craft beer places. So uh, they get together and I used to brew uh, at our um, apartment. Okay. So I used to uh, live with one of my partners. So I brew there. So they know my beer. They used to drink my uh, own brews. <laughs> so uh, so when they, they they want to to have brewers, they they convince me. They, it, it took some time, but yeah, they convinced me to uh, come into this adventure. So uh, excellent, and came all in, guns blazing, ready to. Yeah, it took a uh, um, quite a time, long time to uh, to do the business case and to like to um, solidify the, the the philosophy of the place. So, uh, Illegard, it's all about quality. This okay. is what we strive for, um, and uh, quality for the service, for the food, for all the products that we bring here. It's the same vision that we have for uh, for the brew pub, for, mm -hmm. for the brewery. So uh, it took some time to to put the the puzzle in places in okay. places. So and for example, we have uh, like three uh, cold room with mm -hmm. different temperature and this kind of stuff. So uh, to be able to serve the beer the 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 best way that we can from from the brewing to the serving. Okay, perfect. Uh, what are some of the roadblocks and difficulties you came into creating the Ildegard brand? Actually, we got pretty lucky. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> At the beginning, because. Uh, we had a good location in a good area in Montreal, mm -hmm. so it, it it helped us a lot to uh, to you know at the beginning we have a lot of people and we were able to build a, a kind of strong brand uh, with that with the kind of uh, popularity that we get. So afterward, uh, some breweries uh, invite us to uh, brew beer with them, and so we were kind of lucky to be uh in the brewing community quite uh you know quickly mm -hmm. so and this connection with other brewers give us ideas and give us um you know ability to build our brand so okay perfect and uh the name ildegard where, who came up with that where was that from it's from the name uh ildegard von Bing bingen i think okay. i'm not even <laughs> sure of the of the name uh, it's um german uh, i think uh nuns okay that used to uh Around maybe the year uh, 1000, mm -hmm. I'm not pretty sure the <laughs> dates, but she used to transcript and to um, popularize uh, some okay. uh, some scientific ideas. So we just put their name and rename it in French, Isle from Island, mm -hmm. Isle de Garde. Okay, excellent. And uh, some of the beer names, um, where do those come from? Who comes up with those? <laughs> it's always stupid ideas that we have. <laughs> so uh, for the saison, we name the beer um, saison. Okay. For the bitter, we name it. Better, but mm -hmm. there's other name like uh, it's an IP. Uh, C'est une IPA, it's American. Okay. It's an IP. It's an American one. Yes, it just came from the fact that I brew IPA. It's IPA. It's not the. I think we brew, we brew good IPAs, mm -hmm. and it we always have IPAs on the menu, but it's not the core uh, beers that we brew at Isle Garde. And I always change the ups, and so one time I oh, know just instead of always writing different ups, it's an IPA. It's an American one. So it's always this kind of. Uh, Ideas, mm -hmm. very simple ideas that we have with uh, the beer names. Okay. How long have you been canning? Uh, actually, we have. Uh, we also we we have our debris here. Yeah. But also we have. Um, uh, we're in the co-op uh, Mabrasserie oh, okay. in Rosemont, so we mm -hmm. have two fermenters there, and we can we occasionally can some beer. So we begin to maybe the first can or bottle two years ago. Okay. But we uh, we don't brew a lot of. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very seasonal products. Okay, and the labeling. Who who came up with that for the for the cans? Uh, for this one, it's uh, Sarah Marcotte Boilard. Okay. Uh, she, uh, she she did some of our uh, design, and it's always I, I really like this uh, this design and the other mm -hmm. stuff that uh, she made uh, for us. Excellent. And I said early on, you started brewing from home, and that's where it became. Yeah. What was the first beer you ever brewed? It's a uh, it's a bitter. Okay. Yeah, first one just brew a little English uh, bitter. Class classic style. Yeah, and actually, this is the beer that I use when I used to brew or uh, own brew. This is the beer that uh, I kind of always have in the fridge. It's I always brew uh, bitter. Uh, it's 
easy, quenchable, uh, a beer that you can, you know, drink mm-hmm. every day and. Yeah, like mal- I enjoy the maltiness of bitters. Yeah, um, yeah, the maltiness, the the the, ba- the balance of this kind of beer, uh, the low carbonization, the easy drinking of it. It's one of the beers that I uh, I really like. What's one of the more recent beers you've recently brewed uh, in house? I always brew the same beer. Okay. So, uh, a lot of beer that I I rebrew. Uh, there is a new one uh, called Blonde Divan. Mm-hmm. It's uh, this beer. It's Based on discussion that I had with uh, Belgian brewers uh, when I was in, uh, in Belgium during okay. the, the summer, it's uh, uh, Ivan de Bat from Brasserie La Seine, and he explained to me his brewing philosophy, which I really, really liked, uh, and I really like the beer that he mm-hmm. does. So Blonde Vin is kind of, uh, I don't want to say that, homage or t- t- tribute to, oh, okay. to his yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah that uh, you know, very... Uh, you make dry beers, okay. some uh, some good uppiness in it. So this beer is just very simple beer, uh, Pilsner malt, uh, Styrian and Saz ups, some dry up, not much, mm-hmm. and there's kind of dryness in it. So uh, in, in, with uh, our house uh, yeast, okay. that is called Vito Power. So mm-hmm. with with our yeast, we brew this simple beer and. It's, one of, that I like to drink a lot. The collaborations you've done, I saw on the menu, you have a bunch of collaborations. Yeah. Uh, what are some that you've done uh, that you could tell? There's, we, we did a lot of collaboration. Um, we actually have an event here uh, called, uh, just before Christmas, called mm-hmm. the Parte de Bureau, and it's collaboration for uh, with that we do with some breweries and others from uh, breweries that made collaboration. Okay. Uh, there is one uh, very good one that we made called uh, Ida la Grisette with Dunham. Okay. Uh, that was a simple uh, grisette and mm-hmm. a very, very good one. Uh, I made one in when I was in Belgium with, I uh, don't remember their name. They call it La Petite Patrie. Okay. It's uh, L'Hermitage. Well, it's L'Hermitage in uh, Brussels and mm-hmm. simple laggers. We brew a lot of laggers and they want to me to... Uh, <laughs> Go with them to brew their, one, I think one of their first lager mm-hmm. that uh, that they did, so, and it, it was very good. So, excellent. Who are some people you haven't collabed with yet that you'd like to in, let's say, Quebec and then Canada? Uh, in Canada, there is one uh, Godspeed. Okay. With, uh, Luc, we have an, an event last uh, last month at uh, Vira Volo and and Bar Volo uh, with uh, Dieu du Ciel and uh, Godspeed, uh, mm-hmm. and we we visit uh, Bim Luc uh, Luc Bim La Fontaine Brewery. And I just, I love his beer. Okay. It's, it's so balanced. And this is what I'm, uh, I, I try to achieve. And I mean, you do it very, very well. So. Okay. Uh, anybody else in, uh, let's say the world, because you mentioned you had been in Belgium and you. you uh, yeah, there's so. one brewer that uh, I'd like to uh, brew with him. It's uh, for me, it's uh, a genius brewer called uh, Andreas Gensthaler. Okay. From, uh, it's, uh, for me, the best area to drink beer in the world is Franconia. Okay. So the, around Bamberg. And it's a brewer just south of Bamberg, and he's doing awesome um, smoke beer, uh, one of the best keller beer that I had in my life. And he did just he do just great stuff. So, uh, leaning into that, you've been on a beer vacation before, obviously to Belgium. What's uh, some other ones you've been to? I go each year for the last uh, maybe six or six years in uh, Frank in, in Germany. Mm-hmm. So uh, I went first in Munich, maybe six years, maybe seven years, and I taste some lagers, and I, I was, uh, you know, a lot of people said to me, ah, you go to Munich, yeah, there's it's just lagers. So I went there and I try uh, some Munich uh, Helles and mm-hmm. uh, Pils, and, and I was I was amazed. So uh, the year after, I went to Franconia uh, to drink Keller beer. So in the countryside of, uh, of Franconia, I went, and I mean, for me, this is. The, it's la- they serve the, the, their lager with less carbonation. It's very earthy taste, mm-hmm. and it's very, just very well made. And all the brewery make maybe one, two, three beers, sometimes different beer. And there's so much brewery there that when I taste one of the beer, I I could just drink that one. So I, I've been to Prague too. I I like also uh, Czech pills. Okay. So, uh, and uh, is there a beer vacation you haven't done that you want to in the future? Is there like South America? We South we plan America? we go uh, next month in uh, with my business partners and uh, also brewers from uh, Tête d'Allumette. Uh, we're going to uh, to the UK, okay, to uh, Oxford area. And the goal of this is to learn more about 
the cellarman and the, the let's say art of mm -hmm. doing uh, cask beer so uh, our goal is then bring back this knowledge and uh, do more cask beer and uh, here so this is a you know we, we will visit the cellar cellarman cellar yeah. room but for us it's exciting yeah so. <laughs> yeah for sure i'm, I'm sure that's going to be a fantastic yeah. vacation uh somebody new to craft beer comes into el de garde because a friend mentioned it what would you suggest they try to expand their palate uh try the laggers okay first yeah i think is the best way here uh, we 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 always try to have laggers on the menu and um first thing drink laggers and then go to english beers this is our i i think our core beers and the, the main reason to come here is okay. uh, basically these two we also do uh you know ipas if you like ipas we have other stuff but i think what what we do well mm -hmm. because of our brewing system our brewing system is, is a little bit different from uh what other brewing system in, in North America. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's the best way to enjoy Isle of Garden. Yeah, I always tell people uh, you could judge a brewery by the lager because it's so much of a pain to keep temperature control and and keeping it balanced that if it's a clean lager, then most of their almost all their beers are going to be very good. And so I always suggest that to people who are trying beers, yeah. try the lager first, if they have one. Yeah. So, And you mentioned you have a very unique brewing system. Where does that, this come from? When I designed the system here, um, I wanted to have some open fermenter. Mm -hmm. So we have two open fermenter that there is one beer that uh, is uh, fermenting in it, so people can see it from the uh, from the from the street. Um, and also, I have two closed fermenter. And absolutely, in North American breweries, there is a lot of conical fermenter. Yes. And here, it's mostly a conditioning tank, mm -hmm. and I, I only have two. Uh, conical fermenters, two open fermenters, and I have about uh, five uh, conditioning tank. So here the beer spend uh, for the laggers a week in mm -hmm. the conical fermenters, and for the ales in the open fermenters, it will be about uh, uh, five days. Okay. So And afterward, it go in the conditioning tank. So And the open fermenter um, is quite, are quite useful. It, it's when I do, for example, uh, some laggers in those mm -hmm. fermenter. The taste is very different if I do them in the conical fermenter and in open fermenter. Okay. So and it, it, it allows me also to crop the yeast from the top. So uh, I have a very special yeast that I uh, a lab from the UK sold me. Mm -hmm. It's a yeast from uh, they told me from the Oxfordshire region, okay. in the UK, and we call it. The, we give it a name. We are all from Victoriaville. Mm -hmm. the, most of the owner yep. here. So the Victo Power Ale. <laughs> so it's it's from a Victorian brewery. So we call it the Victo Power Ale, and it worked very well in the open fermenter. You have quite a lengthy food menu. Yeah. I also noticed you have whiskeys and, and bourbons and such on tap. Uh, but when you somebody orders food, do you have, suggest a specific type of beer for that f food? Like let's say I'm getting a, a bacon burger. What would you suggest I have with that? Yeah, uh, for uh, this kind of. Food pairing, my my view uh, to that is to go something that will you know go in the same way or um, add something to the to to the meal. So, for example, the burger, um, a good beer can two uh, two beer come in mind. To go with the meal, I'll go with the, the English brown ale. Okay. So the roasty side, um, the, the the kind of fullness, or you can go for um, an IPA or mm -hmm. a saison that can bring a saison with, with the almost all the dishes but if you go with an ipa with something that can add some different spices or with the meal so awesome. that's an example that uh, cool uh so what's what's next for the ildegard brand we want to push the the, the service of the beer um a step further mm -hmm. so uh what's next is just some small details that we want to uh, implement like having a uh, end pump for okay. the cask beer yep. here mm -hmm. um doing more we when we brew Franconian beers, mm -hmm. uh, in Franconia, they serve the beer from gravity. And we did some tests and actually give very different taste. So maybe try to have more uh, gravity uh, barrel here so we can serve more uh, more Franconian lagers from gravity. It's, it's just, you know, it's there's it's a small difference from the, the cake version, mm -hmm. but we, we want to go this way to just try to 
go a little step further in the service of the the bureaus. Have you ever thought about expansion of the location? Uh, yeah, a couple of maybe one years ago we were um, yeah thinking about it, but maybe we for now we just try to uh, we have uh, like a basement here that mm -hmm. will increase our production. But we, I mean, the brewery is here. It's just in front of Bobby Street, and yep. it's a lot of uh, natural light, and it's a. I like to work at this place, mm -hmm. so yeah, I don't. I want to stay here. Yeah, I'm, I'm good yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. But but if you were partners to get together and let's say uh, there's no microbreweries in La Salle region, would you guys maybe ever think of expanding to regions that don't have craft? I, not really. Okay. I mean, for us, it's all about uh, if I can go to to La Salle, mm -hmm. open a new brewery, and do uh, other stuff that can bring that can upgrade the quality of our product. I'll do it. If it's not about quality of our project mm -hmm. i mean we're good here yeah so oh, it's not great. for us it's not a goal to expand it's uh awesome uh let the people know how they can find you uh online uh location um facebook okay i Lagard on on facebook and on instagram it's mm -hmm. mostly uh, there that you can find us okay and if you're ever in town it's up on Bobier east uh so come check it out uh, as for us, you can find us allbeerinside.com for the webpage, at allbeerinside everywhere else. And as I always tell you, drink craft, not crap. Thank you. Appreciate it.